Our story begins with a reenactment. Ooh, I gotta go take a poop. This is my pair of Audio-Technica A500Z headphones. I love these headphones because they're extremely comfortable, lightweight, and they sound great for the price. I mainly use them for editing my videos, but sometimes I like to sit back and listen to some music with them. But regardless of what I'm using them for, when it comes time to put them away, I'm faced with one major annoyance. And that's having to roll up the ridiculously long cord. It would be way more convenient if I could just somehow change the length of the cable. Oh wait, I can. And you can too. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I made the switch from an annoying integrated cable to an almost OEM looking 3.5 jack. Now before we start, it's important to note that this modification is going to be irreversible. So if you're following this at home, do so at your own risk. And if you have a different pair of headphones, most of the steps will be the same, but every headphone is made differently, so you may have to tweak some steps. So keep that in mind. I recommend taking your headphones completely apart before buying anything to make sure there's enough room inside for the mod. Links to all the parts and tools I use in this video will be linked in the description down below. Honestly, I've been dreading this for a while now because of this part right here. Ooh, that made me cringe. I made sure to leave a bit of length because I'm going to be using some of the existing wire inside the cable set. I also plan on restoring function to the original cable later in this video. After taking off the ear pad, I removed the four Phillips head screws holding the enclosure together and pulled the cable out through the hole. Before I continue any further, I want to see how well the jack fits in the original hole. Bruh. As I suspected, this isn't going to be as easy as I had initially hoped. Luckily, I happen to have a small sanding drum attachment for my rotary tool that seems to be the perfect size to remove this bit of plastic that's in the way. It would probably help if I properly tighten the drum. Bruh. I had to be super careful here because the part that I'm sanding down is really thin and could easily blow through to the other side, completely ruining my headphones. Once I was happy with the fitment of the jack, I had to turn my attention to the enclosure because the channel that holds the cable in place is interfering with the fitment. Nothing a simple pair of flush cutters can't solve. Now. And it looks like I'm going to have to pull out the rotary tool again. Just like before, I have to be super careful not to blow through to the other side as this part's even thinner than the last. Next, I need to remove the tiny wires from the cable housing as I'm going to be soldering them directly to the new input jack. Speaking of the input jack, it's time to tin the solder points in preparation of connecting the wires. After that's done, I need to tin the wires, which is a lot easier said than done because these tiny wires are coated in an enamel, which needs to be melted before the solder can stick. I've found that putting a ball of solder on the tip and holding the wire in it long enough to melt the coating will eventually allow the solder to wick to the wire. Unfortunately, there was no pinout included with the 3.5 jacks I bought, so I had to probe around with my multimeter to figure it out. On screen now is the correct pinout for the jacks that I purchased, which are linked down in the description below. Figuring out which wire went where was pretty easy, as I could see that the wires going to the right ear were gold and red, while the wires going into the left ear were gold and green. Meaning gold is going to be ground, green is left positive, and red is right positive. Now that it's all wired up, I can finally screw the input jack in one last time and put the enclosure back together. Now, I know I said my biggest issue with these headphones was the crazy long cable, but sometimes I could still use the extra length. Couldn't we all? Am I right, <laughs> fellas? So in addition to the shorter cable that I bought, I figured it would be nice to restore full functionality to the original cable using this 3.5mm male jack that I bought. So I cut the sleeve to expose about an inch of wire, then I slid the jack hardware over the wire, making sure everything goes on in the right order. Next, I tin the end of all three wires and push them through their corresponding holes. Thank you. 
Then I crimped the jack to the cable using a pair of needle nose pliers to hold it in place. Finally, I can solder all three wires to the jack connections and screw the cover on. And just like that, I can now use the original 113 foot cable that came with these headphones although I probably never will. But hey, I really hope that you found this video helpful or at the very least entertaining. If you did, you can show your appreciation by hitting the like button and letting me know what you think down in the comments. And if you're struggling to figure out what you wanna watch next, why not check out this video where I designed a custom gaming mouse. And with that, I hope to see you all in the next one. Later.